Guess what? There's another AI VS Code fork, but this one is a little bit different. Not just because it's from Amazon, but because they're actually coining a new way of developing called spec-driven development. Meet Kiro, a familiar IDE, but with two unique features, specs and hooks, and it promises to make it the perfect blend of vibe coding with the clarity of specs. So let's get this set up, talk about the unique features, the similar features, and then the price tag. Now I'll skip through the onboarding here as it's pretty simple. You can log in with Google, GitHub, and Amazon, and then you can transfer your profile from VS Code. It's worth noting though, this does run on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Now, when you open this up with a project, you'll see a familiar interface. It is a VS Code fork, just has a very nice purple theme. The important bit is this AI chat window. Over here, we have two modes. We have vibe, chat first, then build. This is your normal mode where you give it a prompt, it goes off into your code base and actually makes the changes. But the really cool feature is spec, plan first, then build. As you can see, it says create requirements and design before coding starts. It's great for thinking through features in depth, projects needing upfront planning and building features in a structured way. Now, since this is really cool, I just wanna jump in and give this a go. So I have this prompt prepared for my project. This project is simply just a product website and it has three products on it. I say, add the ability to review my products. I don't want authentication for this, just anonymous reviews. And I should be able to see the total score on the product as well as the reviews underneath with filters for the star count, then continue with my normal theme. Now, what's gonna happen when I hit enter here is it isn't gonna go off and start building this in my code base. It's actually gonna turn this into a three-step process. Step one is creating the spec for my prompt. So you can see here, it's created a requirements markdown file. And you actually find this in your code base in the Kiro folder, specs, and then the name it's given for your prompt. And we have that requirements markdown folder. In here, it's actually going to turn my prompt into a load of user stories with acceptance criteria. So you can see we have an introduction. So the feature adds anonymous product review, it's essentially just taking my prompt and written it out in a much nicer way. But then we have the requirements. So the first user story is I want to submit anonymous reviews for products. Then we have our acceptance criteria. Then we have another one that says, I want to see the overall rating. The third one says, I want to read individual reviews. The fourth one says, I want to filter the reviews by star rating. And the fifth one is, I want the review interface to match the existing application design. So it's taken that all out of my prompt, and then it's written up some detailed acceptance criteria to make sure that we're tackling all of the edge cases. I think this is really powerful as it can take a vague prompt and make clear all of the assumptions that the AI was going to make. So I can read this document, make sure it matches what I was thinking. And if it doesn't, I can go back to Kiro and ask it to make changes, make my prompt a little bit clearer, or I could also just go and modify the requirements document myself. If I am happy that everything in the requirements document matches what I was thinking, I can move on to stage two, which is design. So we can come down here and say, move to the design phase. What you'll see here is it's saying it's going to create the design document and it's first examining the existing code base to understand the current architecture and technology stack. So we can see it's reading through the files, checking the existing router structure to understand the API patterns, checking the web app routes to understand the current UI structure. And once it's got a good understanding, it's gonna go ahead and create the design document based on its understanding of the current architecture. Now that it's done that, we can take a look at the design document. As you can see, it is very detailed here. It's best viewed in the preview mode for Markdown. What we have at the top is the overview. So the product review system will extend the existing e-commerce app to support anonymous reviews. Then it lists out our architecture, so the tech stack we're using. I can confirm this is correct. I am using in-memory storage and different things like that in this project. The data flow here, so the user submits it through a React component, front end, we can read all of that. Then it lists out things like the TypeScript interfaces it's gonna create, the database schemas, API endpoints, anything like that is going to be included in this design document. You can even create mermaid documents in here and flow diagrams, so it's a really detailed document so you know exactly what the AI is about to implement. And if you don't like anything that it is going to implement, as I said before, you can go in here, make the changes to the design document, or ask Kiro to do it for you. It really solves the problem of existing AI tools where you give it a prompt, it goes off and makes a load of changes that you weren't expecting, and you have to say, why did you do that? And you spend your time going back through it, trying to undo it, or just undoing it entirely. In this mode, you know exactly what the AI is about to implement. Once we are happy with the design document, then we can move on to stage three, which is the implementation plan. So we'll say move to implementation plan here. And now it's gonna take the design document and the requirements and create our tasks and subtasks. With that done, if I open up the file here for review, you can see that it has an implementation plan. We have a load of different tasks in here. So this goes all the way down to 12, including subtasks. As you can see, it also lays out the requirement that it's trying to hit with each individual task. You can see as well, these are really detailed. So it says test React components. I didn't even ask it to add tests. It says test TRPC procedures. So it's writing the unit tests. 
Up here, it's adding comprehensive error handling. So it's really just going for a comprehensive overview for this initial prompt that I gave it. Look at how small this initial prompt that I gave it was. And we have this whole task list, whole design document, and whole requirements as well. Once we are happy with the task list, we can say, yes, let's go ahead and finalize this. And it's going to list out what it created. So it has the requirements document, design document, implementation plan. And then it will tell you what your next steps are. So next steps are going into this task document and then just clicking start task. So you can do this individually, or you can actually just click on a load of these and it will start queuing them one after another. As you can see, it's just going to put it in the prompt window. And this is where it's essentially going to be that vibe mode where it will go off and make those changes for you. While it's doing that task, I want to point out that Kiro says specs will actually stay synced with your revolving code base. And that's because if you make a code change yourself, you can then ask Kiro to update your specs. Or if you manually update your specs, you can refine the task list. So it's going to solve the problem where us developers tend to just stop updating these files. And that means in the future, when someone tries to look at it, they realize that it doesn't match what's in the code base. And there we go. It's already finished one of my tasks. So you can see it ticks it off of the implementation plan and says it's complete. And then it just moves straight onto the next one automatically. Now, one thing I do want to point out about the way this interface works is one thing I missed from Cursor is it doesn't actually show you the updates being streamed in live. You can still view the diff, but it doesn't stream it in like Cursor, which I always think is a really nice feature. Although, to be honest, it's not a must-have. Another thing I spotted from the first task as well is it can go ahead and run commands for you. So that's an overview of specs, the first unique feature of Kiro. Let's take a look at the second unique feature, which is hooks. These are event-driven automations. So you can see here, the first step is an event occurs. So hooks listen for events like file creation, save, or deletion. Then a prompt is sent to the agent. So the agent receives a prompt in the background to execute a pre-written task on files in your app. Then Kiro makes the updates. So you can use this for things like when a React file was saved, go ahead and update the unit testing or add it to Storybook or something like that. Or even when we have a file saved, update the documentation. So they have a few examples down here, like optimize my code and language localization. If I choose the update my documentation one, something that's really cool about this UI is you just describe the hook in natural language and then you hit enter. This then goes off to the AI to actually create the hook for you and generate a more sophisticated system prompt. Once that's complete, you're taken to the hook editor where we have a title for our hook, the description, the event that it triggers on, and you can see there's actually a manual trigger option as well. Then we have the file pass to watch and this system prompt that we want to send to the Kiro agent when this event triggers. You can see here, you could also come in here and manually edit it if you want as well. Now, something really cool about hooks is they're actually saved as a file in your code base. So you can now upload this to Git to share it with your team. So it's going to massively help with ensuring consistency across the team, because once you share this, anytime someone makes a code change, you can be a little more confident that the checklist that you might have of adding unit testing or anything like that is going to be completed. Now, we can really quickly test the speed of these changes if I change healthy here to just say okay and then save it so hopefully my hook does trigger we can see up here in the task list it does have the documentation sync task we can actually see what it's doing if we click into that as well so hopefully my readme gets updated with some new documentation and there we go we can see that the readme has been updated in git here and down here it's adding in some documentation for the api endpoints this one is an absolute game changer for me i really like that i can just get ai to document features as i go without me having to ask it to and there's so many more use cases of that that i haven't even thought of yet so that's what I would say are the unique features of Kiro. Let me know what you think of these down in the comments below, because I think some of these are really cool. Now let's talk about some of these similar features that you'll get, and we'll just do a bit of a quick fire. So over in the Kiro sidebar here, you'll find a few more features. Obviously we have our specs and then our agent hooks. Then we have agent steering. So these are just the documents that you can create to guide the agent's behavior and responses. Similar to those Claude Markdown files that you might generate or the Cursor MDC files that you generate and loads of other versions of that in all of the other AI assistants. Then you can see down here, we also have MCP servers. Over in the prompt window, you can see we can add in context here. That could be files, code bases, code, docs, repositories, terminals, URLs, current files, all of that. We can add in images, and then we also have our model selector. Now, Kiro is powered by Claude, so at the moment, we only have 3.7 and 4 from Sonnet. Then you also have this autopilot button, which essentially takes it from agent mode to simply chat mode. So you can see here, when autopilot is off, Kiro is going to ask for approval before making any changes. We turn this on, it's just going to make changes on our behalf. So it's going to be a pretty similar experience to other AI IDEs. Maybe it's a bit lacking in a few features at the moment, but do remember this is only a preview. 
And since it's a preview, everything is currently free at the moment. You can see that future idea for pricing on their website. As you can see in the free tier, you get 50 interactions per month. But you still get specs, agent hooks, MCP, agent steering. In the $19 a month tier, you just get increased limits. So you get 1,000 interactions per month. Then they have a $39 a month tier, where you get 3,000 interactions per month. There we go, that is Kiro, Amazon's take on an AI VS Code fork and a new way of coding called spec-driven development. I suppose it's kind of only new for AI though, as we've kind of been doing that manually long before AI came about. But in my opinion, that is a task that I like AI to automate. I don't know many developers who have enjoyed writing specs and design documents. The second feature of Hooks though is the one that I love the most. I can see so many use cases where this is going to come in handy, and it means that I no longer have to think about what step comes next after I write each piece of code. I can just define it once, share it to my team, and I know that it will be complete. What do you think of all of this? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, leave a like and subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.